also in a second. Great, I'm also going to spotlight myself too. Um, and you've got the option of putting in either gallery view or speaker view. So thank you so much for this fantastic invitation to collaborate uh, again with the Footsteps Festival and thinking of well-being generally, but absolutely for your, your group of people, ways to support, to help and to inspire to use time as an opportunity. So I'm originally a scientist. I work as an artist as well. I combine science and art. Very, very thankful to the lottery. They've given us a small grant as part of Origami Pulse to support our communities. And I think the community's changed, doesn't it? Now it's on the internet, it's wherever you are. And we're really keen to, he to help more vulnerable communities. The great thing with Origami is any paper will do. So it's you know, everybody's got that access. Um, we made 25,000 origami inspiration leaflets which went to hospitals and we're going to be doing more things again. Um, and this project's called We Can Origami, We Can! And it's about having that positive and kind nurturing attitude to yourself. Um, I have to say, I was not really someone who did origami. I don't even remember doing it as a child, which is unusual. And it was really a patient who asked me to learn in a hospital where I work one day a week. And she asked me to learn how to make these gorgeous flowers, which are about 10 years old now, and they still look so beautiful and fresh. And it was only because she asked me to learn to pass on to others, I felt I had to challenge myself. And I found it hard at first, but I found such benefits. If you find it, you think it's a bit tricky, great that's exactly why you should do it it will help you a lot so i'm really delighted to introduce origami to you and i know quite a lot of you have been doing origami with me already and for others it's completely new so um i hope it's we're going to start with nice simple folds so some of you may be familiar with these but i think the joy as well with origami is you can do these things so many times and you'll still always find beauty and calm in that so i'm going to start in a moment with my favourite um, fold which I've been doing over this time and I think one that cannot be done enough so let's start with it. I'm going to keep a mystery what it is but if you've had any sessions with me you're quite likely to have done this with me but I'm not going to apologise for it because it's a lovely thing to do. So I'm going to grab something to press on a, a board um, and I'm going to grab it's just you know bog standard paper you might during this session, if you've got any pens or pencils, use those, make it decorative, add your own colour and expression. So first of all, we're just going to make a square. So I'm going to fold in half. And for me, my three rules for origami, the first one, start well, it will continue well. So it's that real attention to detail, lining up corners, nice and exact. And actually, if you take your time, you'll definitely be able to do that. So it is being a little bit critical, but it's actually, it's about getting things nice and orderly. They will work much better for it. So start well, that's my first rule. Second rule is to give good, strong folds. And it's the folds that actually give it the strength. And you also let out a little bit of tension too. <clears throat> so I think that's quite relaxing, adding the folds. Again, it works well that way. And my third rule, not to forget, is it's meant to be fun. So really... Don't, uh, don't take it too seriously. If you end up doing something else, great, you're an inventor. So it's good whatever. You're allowing yourself that chance. So I've simply folded a piece of paper in half. I'm now just gonna do a little tiny nick there. And if you put your hand nice and close to the edge, you can gently rip it off. I've ended up enjoying ripping paper. Turns out in a way that's an art form too lovely sound I look at the little fibers it's all lovely natural from trees what an incredible invention paper is so I've got an A5 piece of paper and we're going to make a square I know some of you have got origami paper so you can just enjoy that you've already got your square but for others you may not so I'm going to take a corner and bring it up here in a little line and make a nice little sharp pointy triangle. Again, it's just the joy of these lovely, simple, but beautiful shapes and the feel of it as well. So underneath here is a square, but we need to release it. So we're gonna remove this rectangle. So if you take your piece and turn it over, grab that rectangle, pull it back and line it up and squash it down like so. 
Nice little squash there. Oh. Hands arriving too, got a good squash. And again, good fold means you'll be able to rip it off. Uh, welcome, Anne. We're just starting our first fold, but we're going to be doing lots more things. So don't worry, you, you're just, I would suggest you just watch this first one. And again, I'm going to just tear off that rectangle. Actually, Anne, all we're doing at the moment is making a square. So it's, uh, you might happen to have a square. If you don't, don't worry. I'll show you in the next thing. But hopefully you've got a square with a diagonal line. Like so. Great. So if you have an origami piece of paper, it's just decorative paper. That's all. Nothing different about it, really. Um, it's folding it in half and you've got a diagonal line. So everyone happy? Great. So our next step is we're going to fold it in half again, but we're just going to do a pinch in the middle. So we're not going to, don't go all the way across. It doesn't matter if you do, but it's best if you can just do a pinch. So I'm going to take this piece of paper and simply fold it in half, match up those corners. One at a corner there and just a little pinch in the middle. It's just to add a halfway point. That's all you're aiming to do, like so. So it should be looking like this. Um, over this time, I've been doing lots of folds as well with nurses as well, encouraging them, particularly during these very hard times to relax. Great. So we're going to take the top corner and we're going to bring it down to that little mark that you've made. Great. So again, just that lovely going slowly, it's relaxing that way. And attention to detail and all of these things bring you into the moment you're bringing you to focus on this rather than anything else which is very healthy because our minds are way too brilliant we can start thinking about all sorts of things often not great things so <laughs> that's why it's good to do fun things uh, i found origami such a great tool of just playing and seeing what you find. Oh, Jess, you've been doing so much over this time, haven't you? Short period of time, Jess has been inventing loads of amazing things. So we've got that little corner into the middle. I'm going to take this bottom corner and bring it all the way up to the top. Yeah. Uh, it's like joining a little, a little journey from others. Uh, maybe with time you might start playing, finding you make up your own things. It's whatever you, whatever you want to do. It's a bit like art that you might like just patterns and abstract stuff, or you might like animals, lots of people like animals. I tend to be a bit more abstract to actually, but whatever brings you joy, I think you have to follow your own passions. Houses. Houses, yes. <laughs> You've been making lots of little houses, your own little village. So cool. Yes. I mean, what could even this be? I'm sure it could be something else as well. So at the moment, we've, it's wider at the bottom. And we're going to take this little side and we're going to fold it up along that vertical line. I think you'll soon start realising what we're folding. It is a real favourite. And I pretty much do this at the start of every fold. I think it's something we will have to, we need. <laughs> um, again, that bottom line, I'm bringing it up along that vertical line. Like so, you can see what we're making. It's traditional, so it's lovely to think this has been passed from one to another. A heart. Now it's a little bit pointy at the moment, so I would recommend that you take the top points and just fold back a little bit. It's just sort of a, uh, it doesn't matter, you don't need to see the back of it, so you're just tucking that, tucking that away, and the same with the other top point. That's it. And the side points too, that's also pointy. Lovely to see everybody. Oh, great. And for those of you who've recently just joined, we're gonna be folding something else in just a moment. So just watch the end of this one. So that side points again, you can fold in. And again, the other side. So hopefully, 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 You've got a heart. <laughs> of course you've got a heart. You wouldn't be alive for that one, would you? <laughs> but it's a lovely way to show, show our care for everybody. Oh, can you all hold up your hearts if you managed it? Or oh, whatever you have. Great. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> oh, I'll do a one, two, three. One, two, three. Thanks, everyone. Oh, I'm money too. One, two, three. Oh, Carol, Emily. Oh, more hearts are appearing before our very eyes. 
thank you oh thank you so much lovely to see you all thanks a lot it's a nice way to start isn't it so next i'm going to show you another fold which is also a traditional fold it's very simple and i quite like how you can put this in it so you'll see in a moment um so our other half piece of paper or whatever paper you have i'm going to show you each time how to make a square if you've got origami paper just be patient with me It'll be fine but not everybody will have it so um i'm again going to take a corner and i am going to bring it down to the bottom now i was recently asked on world origami day i was contacted by bbc radio 5 live if i could teach a piece of origami on the radio i kid you not <laughs> how do you do that it's incredibly hard this is the fold i taught and actually it is the simplest one that i know but it's also functional and it was close to midnight and they found it absolutely hilarious you'll see you'll see how you can test it out so keeping up the mystery a little bit so again i just did the same thing of taking that corner lining it up we need to re release the rectangle so turning it over picking it up folding it back now whenever i find a piece of paper i just want to make squares and i have so many little bits of paper i have start experimenting with these rectangles or making lists which i do love making my little lists of these things <sighs> there's probably all sorts of interesting origami as well you could do with this so if you have origami paper again if you can fold it along that diagonal line great to make a triangle it's like a little hat there <laughs> yeah i like it like that so this is super super simple and as i said it's a functional thing i'm keeping up the mystery for as long as i can um it's a little triangle if you imagine that these little points are almost like arms one's going to go onto one shoulder and one's going to go on the other that's what we're going to do with the paper so i'm going to take one little it's also like a hug too a little hug for yourself so you're going to take this bottom corner lift it up onto this shoulder and I'm going to keep this kind of horizontal to the ground there as well. Um, so this would be, yeah, this was about the only one I thought I could actually explain without seeing it. Um, and it's quite, it's quite fun doing, ra doing radio because actually we could use Zoom so I could actually see, we could see each other. But they still had to be, had to communicate it in words. But most people wouldn't see that, but I could see that it worked. Um, and he certainly got the sense of joy. Colin Murray, who was really fun, entered the spirit. Right, so we're going to take this bottom corner and lift it up onto the other shoulder. Like so. And it's looking, I suppose it's looking a bit like a strange looking pentagon, but it's also looking like a cup, which is what it is. It's a cup or a purse. We're not quite finished, but we're almost there. Um, so hopefully it's looking something like that. And you've got these top little flaps, top flap. I wonder if you could just bring forward and push down and squash down. And it's just wonderful. You can take a little piece of paper and transform it to so many things. There's something just so mind boggling about that. It's as simple and complex as you want it to be, really, as well. You can do very simple things, very complicated things. Depends what kind of person you want to be. <laughs> I, <laughs> I tend to quite like the simple. Um, I'm going to take this top flap and then just bring it back and squash it down. I love the thought that these things have been passed through generations and people have had fun and passed it on, maybe grandparents to children and, and so on. So it does cross generations. Also, actually, as an adult, the great thing is you could do so much more than you could as a kid. And yet children are so enthusiastic and it's such a wonderful thing to do. So it really does, I think, tick all boxes for all ages, really. So you've got a little cup. So you could use this as a purse. You could put things in it. You could decorate it. But you could literally pour water in there and drink from it. And that's what I saw being done on the radio. Uh, it brought a lot of joy. <laughs> So yeah, maybe just once or twice you could drink from it. Um, but you could you could sort of decorate it. It's quite nice to sort of colour in and uh, yeah, make special in some way. Also, you should be able to find that your heart will pop in there, and it sort of looks like a little you're growing your love. <laughs> Makes you think of a plant pot as well. Yeah, 
That's good, isn't it? They sort of link together. Oh, lovely. Let's let's take a little screenshot of our of our little growing our hearts, growing our care. It's all about the self-care. And actually, when you care for yourself, you'll be able to care for others more. And the great thing is with origami, if I do it one, two, three, is as Jess has found, you'll end up doing lots and then you can pass it on to others and they'll appreciate it. Right. A one, two, three. One, two, three. Ooh, lovely. Lovely little plant pots of, of care. So next thing we're going to make is we're going to make a very, very simple tray, which is, again, a traditional fold. After that, we're going to make something that can jump into the tray as well. So far, these are all traditional. So from Japan and uh, origami, obviously, is based on paper, which actually comes from China. That's where it was invented. So many things are originally originated in China. Um, and... Uh, yeah, slowly paper came over to Japan, took a few hundred years, and it was so expensive and so precious. It was a way of honouring this amazing material. So again, actually, I'm going to just going to turn, fold it in half. Actually, Karen, you probably want to go and find something like A5 paper, because this requires an A5 piece of paper or those dimensions, or you could get rid of a strip from your square, but we're actually not going to use origami. Great, yes, excellent. So Karen, if you just yeah fold it in half, nice and carefully, good strong fold, and fold this in half. So this is a little sort of tray box, and it's very simple. And it's very functional and lovely. One I've only fairly recently learned actually. Yeah, it's a good one. So it's just holding up my little A5 piece of paper. Um, and we're gonna, first of all, we're going to fold it in half to make a rectangle. So take your piece, the long ways, you can see I've got my long ways piece of paper and I'm folding in half. There we go. I simply fold it in half again, good strong fold. It makes it all work. It's kind of relaxing, letting out that that pressure and that stress onto your paper, it makes you something lovely, you feel that much better. <laughs> um, I just find this such a great tool of lifting my mood, my spirits. Um, I hope you all find that too. So next, I kind of opened it up and I'm next gonna take the outside to the middle line. So we're gonna make quarter lines in effect. So I've opened it up, I'm gonna take this outside and bring it to the middle line. I think I need to do this on the surface myself. Yeah, I recommend you definitely do this on your something to press on. So I've done it there, and I'm also going to take the bottom and bring that to the middle as well. Also, a sort of continuation of support. Um, ever since the pandemic, can you believe it, March 2020, I have been doing a fold every week. So if you to look up Dr. Lucy Burns on YouTube, you'll see I add a fold every week. And pretty much every Wednesday, I do a live fold at two. So I'll also be doing a live fold at two as well. Um, but it's actually part of my work in a hospital, so supporting staff and patients. But the lovely thing is for everybody to use as well. So really happy, happy that other people join us, please do. So I've done my quarters. I uh, hope you're all there. Do shout if you need me to slow down or explain anything. I'm now going to turn this vertically. I guess that's landscape position, isn't it? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it in half as well, like we did before. Okay, probably easier on the surface. Okay, just take your time. Nice and relaxing. And the great thing is with this video, you'll be able to go back to it if you wish as well. So I've done that midline and I opened it up. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the outside and bring it to the middle. So it's quarters again. I'm making like a little grid. Like so. And then the bottom up to the middle line. There we go. So it's looking like that. And I'm keeping it in this case closed up. So I took the outside to the middle, 
people kept closed up like that. Yep, happy everyone. Great, great. So our next, our next little step, next little path in the journey is we're going to take the corner. I'm going to take the corner and I'm going to fold it along that quarter line. Kind of interesting to the camera. Doing my best, I might have to check what I'm doing there. But I'm basically taking the corner and I'm folding it along that line. I think that's not very accurate. Um, and I'm going to do that actually for every corner. So I took that side corner, folded it in. I'm going to do the same in the next one. Again, folding that along that line, like so. And then I'm going to do the same for the bottom ones as well. And then with my other one too. Almost there again. This is another lovely traditional design. Simple yet effective pieces of engineering. All of these things are things that can work. I love that about it. Practical. I think the practical brings us really into the moment, doesn't it? Which is basis for mindfulness as well. That you're present, <laughs> hmm. and that gives us a break from everything else, which is more thinking a bit too much uh, which is something that can happen so as it is i hope you've, you're all in that position so you've got the sort of little bit that sticks out here you're just going to take that and bring it up against those corners so i'm going to take this up lift it up so it's fitting neatly against that line those lines of the corners and squash it down like so and the same thing as well with the bottom half taking that little overhang and bringing it down look like a box does it <laughs> it really will be there we go quite happy with mine so you could maybe later on because you can have time you could maybe like color in different areas i quite like doing that to look nice. So are you all ready with your pieces? Moment of, yes, moment of transformation. You have made your box. So how to, how to, make, it, how to make it open up? Actually, I'm gonna turn it vertically this way. And what you can do is pop your fingers underneath the flaps and just gently pull. And as you pull it out, it becomes a tray, I kid you not. So it's flat like that, pulled out, and you'll find it's becoming a tray. Now you might want to just square up those corners. So I'm just giving them a little bit more of a little bit more of a fold there and there. But you're not adding any separate fold. Excellent, Julia, I can see yours there. Yes, it's a lovely little practical tray, isn't it? Excellent. It works, it works. And you can easily squash it down again as well. So it's, but it's actually quite a sturdy little box. Oh, nice paper set, Alison. Matthew looks great. So I thought we could make something that could jump into the box. <laughs> something simple, but beautiful. It's another traditional fold. And it was lovely to hear from Matthew that he remembers making this as a child. And the other day I was working with a nurse and she said, I remember learning this. She's from Indonesia. She learned it at school. so. It's something that's crossed the world. And uh, we're gonna make a lovely little jumping frog. So I don't know whether you'd, whether you'd like to see one jumping first of all, so you know what it is that we're gonna be doing. Why not? I've been using lots of mystery, but we could actually have a go at, yay, <laughs> making a little frog. And it's quite fun because it could also live in a tray. I seem to be quite good at aiming into that, unlike, unlike me with a ball normally. But we're going to make a nice little nice little jumping frog. So it's got little, little legs, little bouncy legs at the back. And it looks quite frog-like as well as it works. So if you get into it, you might want to make a few, have little frog races. You get this kind of thing. It can only help distract content. So how to do this? Again, I'm going to make a square. And in a moment, we're actually, once we make our square, we're actually going to make a rectangle from the square. 
So we're gonna make, you could make two frogs from one square. Two for the price of one. So we're gonna take a corner. Again, I've got a half an A4 piece of paper. So if you've got A4 paper, you might want to break it down in half, fold it over and tear it in half, and then make a square. I'm sure you're getting the hang of this by now. Um, here we go. I quite like the sort of rich of it, really. Nice. Okay, nice little sharp pointy triangle. I'm going to remove the rectangle. So if you have um, origami paper, then just hang on for us. So I'll explain what to do with that. That's right. Again, I'm releasing, removing that rectangle size. Like so. So I have a square. Hopefully you do too. And I want you to take your square and actually fold it in half to make a rectangle. So I have simply folded it in half like so. Um, and actually again, good strong fold means you should be able to make a little mick and tear it in half again with all ripping. I recommend putting your hand nice and close to that edge. Otherwise it could go in other directions which you don't want it to. So I have got half a square, a rectangle. Great. Oh, I like how Anne's got some green paper. Very good. Mm. <laughs> so I will wait till we're all ready. So maybe have a mouthful of coffee while I make sure that everyone's great. Most people ready? Great. So what we're going to do for making this frog is we're actually going to be doing two little like crosses at each end. They're going to end up being its legs. So it happened because I'd made the square from folding, happened to already have a nice little diagonal line. So that's what you're doing. So if you take one corner and bring it up to line it up there, that's a bit of one of the crosses. Now on the other side, you can do the same as well. Bring this up. It doesn't matter whether you're which corner you're bringing, it could be that one or that one. You're just, we're basically going to end up doing a little crisscross on each end. So it should be able to just match up nicely through the corner there. And then you might open it up and then take the corner and do the other, the other side. So you're going to end up with a cross on each side. Tempting to do it to camera. That's right. Okay, done, cross on one side. I'm gonna keep one of these closed and open up my other one. I want to see that line. So I'm gonna take this corner. It's only in your hands that it will start to make some kind of sense maybe. Okay, matching that up there. And squashing it down. Lovely. And then when you open it up, hopefully you've ended up at some point with two crosses, two little crisscrosses at each end. Lovely. Great. I'll make sure that everyone's everyone's happy there. Great. Looking good. Oh, I think nice. What different colours are great. Little mini one too. Right. So if you're going to take a little piece and turn it over, it's more like a little strange tent like shape maybe so we did it we turned it over and next we're going to do a horizontal line through the middle so i'm going to take this and fold it down so it meets that middle point like so squashing it down and the same with the bottom as well bringing that up to that middle line so it should just almost complete that square in the middle, really. Looks like we're just making a square after all of that effort. Hmm. 
don't know how accurate this is. Let's see what if I'm doing. Could be better. Let's send it to a camera. So pretty amazing. There we go. So it should be looking like this. I'm just going to now take it sideways and open it like a little card. Opening it like a card. Whoops. Now I want you to take your little piece and pop your finger underneath the middle of a cross and push and it pops. Did you see it change shape? And the same with that other one. Push and it pops. So it's hopefully looking like that. <laughs> hope it's working. Um, you are welcome to say if it's struggling. <laughs> uh, I'm going to now turn it over and you are fine. I guess I'm turning it vertically again. Sorry, I keep whizzing it from one side to another. Just, just irresistible. I'm going to push in the sides and you'll find it just folds up. You see these side bits I'm pushing in and pushing up and it falls back into a square again. <laughs> and you can already feel this is a nice little bouncy structure in there as well. It will become your frog, frog legs to come. Great, great. I hope you've managed to follow that. Okay, so next I'm amazed Matthew that you learnt this from primary school and that's why I've heard from others. It's Quite a few steps, aren't there, in this one? We've still got a few more to go. It's well worth it. Um, so we're going to take this bottom corner, one of these little side corners, and we're going to bring it up to the top. You think these are little legs. We're taking these little legs for a journey. Um, so we're going to take a little leg, bring it up to the top. And the same with the other one. Lifting it up. And front legs or back legs depending on whatever it will be and the same again these sides bringing that down to the bottom lining up again just enjoy taking your time and that attention to detail again that little corner bringing it down if any of you are stuck feel free to say you're stuck Karen Karen <laughs> unmute yourself where are you oh bless you okay it looks <laughs> so you did the diagonal lines oh feel free to unmute yourself um okay yeah. I, I was with you all the way up to then i had to turn it over and i had the pattern it was going to be the pattern was going to be hidden so i ah. tried to make it pop again on yeah. the pattern side yes so that's where i've got to making it sort of pop Pop. on the pattern side is it yeah mm -hmm. ah yeah that's right so they need to go in don't they they yes yeah. so oh 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 sorry everybody yeah <laughs> oh, don't worry i'm really bad at explaining which colors so i should go on which because i rarely use colored paper so I yeah just this is where i'm falling down, down i'm thinking don't is worry it, so what you're wrong without me i'll look afterwards don't Are hold everybody sure? up yes <laughs> it's sorry, part of the sorry. puzzle. I think it's also about just being playful and knowing. Yeah, that I'm having fun. Yeah. I'm having, You're having fun. fun. That's what's fun. And you will be able to. You will be able to do it. And you'll be able to rewind this video and have a look. I so. will definitely. I can't not have a frog. <laughs> no, you can have a collection. You're certainly yeah, going to have definitely. two. You've got two pieces of paper, haven't you? Yeah. Got another yeah. one. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Lovely. Thank you. You're very Good luck, well, everybody. Well. Thank you. <laughs> So we hopefully, for many of you or some of you, uh, managed to get those little little side bits down. So we've got little squares. Yeah, there's quite a few steps, aren't there, for this one? <laughs> like that. I hope that's working for you. So these are little legs, but at the moment they don't stick out the feet. So to make these feet stick out, these top top one, I'm going to fold back so it lines up along there so this little top bit that's sticking out i am folding back along that line it's all a bit fiddly isn't it now but you've then got a little little foot that's sticking out i'm going to do the same with the other one so it's this bit up here and fold back to match up with that line and then it gives you a little foot it does also look a bit like a samurai hat if that's something you've ever come across or made 
It looks like a samurai hat there. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom as well. So this line here, I am folding back. It's amazing how much you can concentrate, isn't it? Just this little one piece of paper, what you can do with it. And the same with the other one. might need to see what I'm doing. There we go. So hopefully it's looking something like that. And you can sort of see they're like little legs, but it looks like a little table, quite frankly. It's not really like a frog yet. <laughs> so are most people up up to this point? <laughs> yeah. Getting there, great, great. Right, it's important that we all have it the same way round. So have it so it looks like these two samurai hats, like a samurai hat, I suppose, with a reflection below. So if you just take it as it is and turn it to the back, and we're gonna give, first of all, the back of it, the back of the frog. So we're gonna take this bottom bit and fold it up. And then you can see that the little legs are staying stuck out underneath like so, folding it down. And then, in a second, ooh, definitely hard to not see what I'm doing there. So hopefully you've got two little, little legs there. And next, at the moment, it's a very wide frog. We need to narrow our frog down a little bit. We're gonna take this side and we're gonna match it up with that vertical line. So I'm gonna take this and Fold it along that middle line, like so. So it's that top line. I'm going to line it up along the middle line. You see what I'm doing, like so. And then the same on the other side. So that diagonal line bringing up along the vertical line. So for me, I was shown by by a person, I think that's the best way to learn origami. If you've tried instructions, I know Matthew's good at this, but I find it really hard diagrams and books. So if ever you felt like that, don't worry, you're not alone. It is quite hard. It's also very, very hard to draw diagrams as well. But I think actually YouTube is much easier for learning. So being able to see someone's hands, being able to rewind, being able to change the speed, um, much easier. I think we are meant to learn from, from others really directly so hopefully it doesn't quite all come together but we can it's very clever because the little triangle at the bottom has a little tiny pocket at the side see there's a little pocket and you can take the side and you can curve it round and pop it into the pocket and it will shuffle in there yay can't believe i did that without looking <laughs> and i'm gonna well, I might not be lucky this time, but there's another little pocket on that side. And then you can curve your piece of paper around and get it in. Excellent, Julie, that's looking great. I hope when you're doing something like this, you feel like a lot more connected. I would feel like I almost forget the cameras, but actually in a way, to be honest, it's easier than if I was to teach you actually in person, if that was, you know, if that was a safe possibility because everybody needs actually quite individual attention. You need to see what else is going on. So this is actually, I think, a much better way of learning origami than, than if we were in person. So it's all good. It's been made for this age, I think. So at the moment, we've got hopefully a frog, but it hasn't really got bouncy back legs yet. So I want you to turn your frog around to its belly. It's going to look a little bit painful. <laughs> but we're going to take our frog and we're going to just push it up in half. Ooh, ouch. And <laughs> to get the spring in those back legs, we're going to take that top bit and bring it back to the middle. So we're just folding it in half. It's quite thick. That's good because it needs a bit of bounce. And you don't have to press it too, too hard because ultimately it does need bounce. So I'm going to take this bit, bring it down to this line. Oh, lots of concentration needed, <laughs> like so, squashing it down. Hopefully you've got this very nice little frog. Question is, does it bounce? I don't. <laughs> my little tray and 
you to spring back and it will, yay, hopefully spring forth. Oh, <laughs> like it's just peering over the top there. <laughs> oh, but you can maybe draw on it as well if you wished or, wow, oh gosh, it almost went my coffee. That was a bad idea. <laughs> could have been a very soggy frog. Uh, and they're rather fun for, for races. Oh, I can see some there. Just lovely. Wow, that really jumped, didn't it? <laughs> have you made one before, Jess? No. No. Oh, well, no. welcome. Welcome to this wonderful world. Of yeah, that's my first frog who is going to go and live in the brook at Cloud Cuckooville. <laughs> It's exactly where we all need to go. Oh, that's lovely. They're really yeah, good, aren't they? Right. So I'm halfway through a second one. Oh, but, um, I was trying to do two at the same time, but so I couldn't keep up. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll watch a video to finish off. So yeah, you'll be able you. to do that. Oh, Anne, yes, of course. Oh, can you unmute yourself? Sorry. Anne? Oh, excellent. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Can you just do the last two folds? Oh, yes. OK. Sorry. So, Sorry. No, don't worry. So this was the frog belly. Are you on the frog belly? Let's hope it's not tickly. Um, I'm going to push up the back legs and it just naturally goes there. And then we just want to give that little kind of um, zigzag for the back legs. So that bit which is up here bring back to the bottom line is quite thick so it's quite tricky to do to be honest don't press it too too hard because if it was a super sharp fold it won't have to bounce so i'm just loosely loosely doing that and when you turn it over oh this way you'll see it's a nice little shape you can really recognize it as a frog great that's it and then when you when you want to bounce it you sort of push back with your finger there on the solid surface let go and it should jump is, has yours worked? <laughs> Yay! It's just yes, really it's worked. Nice. It's, yeah, it works. It's a good play for world, isn't it? How, how how can it make you feel anything other than happy? <laughs> yeah, and it's a great thing to do with others as well. Oh, Karen, you'll get there. You will. you well. You know what, frogs? They they go through so much change don't they transformation you'll give it that life at the moment it's just maybe is it frog spawn or is it tadpole i don't know <laughs> um great so another thing that i thought we could make which is simple and beautiful is to make ourselves a lovely little bookmark um i hear that you've also got a book club at the festival yay matthew oh wow matthew's done a very complicated so matthew does quite amazing folds um this was an old one i wow. actually made my I made my childhood frog and it's a different design. Oh, is it? It's a, it's a sl slightly different design than more. Ah, because there's lots of different. So the, so the one I taught's not the traditional one that you learned. No. That's not the same one, but it, <laughs> and I, it still has the same mechanics and the same folds, just a different base. Different. Um, yeah. It was right, the same right up until the middle. Oh, so interesting. Um, and I left the paper doubled up as a little trick that I learned. Huh. I, I didn't separate them and it gives it a little bit more stiffness and a little bit uh. more bounce. And the smaller frog, the further it jumps. Does it? This is a small one. Yeah. Oh, interesting. There's so a really nice. Even smaller. Oh. There's a really nice frog that you can do. It's very simple with train tickets. It's very nice. Yeah. It's a simple frog, and that works very well because actually cards even better because it's quite yeah. stiff. Okay, um, for the festival, we're going to have a frog competition. <laughs> <laughs> frog Olympics. Yeah, yes. frog Olympics. <laughs> that sounds great. Oh. Yeah. Oh, actually, could we take a screenshot of frogs so far? Matthew's, Matthew's got his big collection as well. Right. <laughs> okay. Or so far. <laughs> or not. Okay. Oh, lovely to see. Hey, I'll give two. Excellent, Jess. Right. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, lovely. Kind of, you can imagine. Oh, and Katie, let's have a look at your. You're a lovely frog too. Thank you. I like it with your red jumper. <laughs> That's very nice. 
very striking. So we're going to make a butterfly bookmark, which is designed by Ralph Matthews, which is really lovely. And it works very well. So here's one I made earlier, um, as they say. And it kind of, it's almost like a butterfly that will kind of fly onto the corner of a page and it sticks just really neatly. It's an excellent bookmark. It's not just something to poke in, it will actively hug onto the page, which is great. Also, we'll do it plain, but I recommend decorating. I just did this one quickly. So actually this one is one that requires A6 paper actually. So take your A5 and halve it again. That's what I'd recommend. So I'm gonna take my, oh, actually I happen to have a pad. I might use that instead actually. So if you've got something, like an A5 and then halving it again because actually you probably don't want too big a bigger piece but we're gonna we're not using a square it's a non-square one again which is quite fun I would like to learn more origami which doesn't use squares actually it uses these A4 dimensions because it's so much easier isn't it if you're not having to make a square <laughs> so I've just got a little little rectangle like that and maybe later on you could decorate yours as well so great 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 oh that looks pretty Jess nice paper you've got there so we're going to fold this in half and it's going to look a bit then like a card so take your piece and fold it in half match up corner to corner so we've got quite a big collection haven't we of things we've made Simple yet beautiful. That's it. So I folded that in half. I took my piece, folded it in half. Great. And I want you to fold it in half again. So keep it closed up as if it's a closed card. We're going to take the top down to the bottom. Like so. Well, I think this will be the last fold. And then we can always decorate or chat or reflect on what it's been like as well. Your heads will probably feel quite tired after all of this <laughs> new learning that you've got. Great. So our next step. Hmm. Sorry, it's just to open it up again. So we had our piece, we folded it over and then we folded it again. So it should be looking like this. Are you happy? Yeah. So we're going to take one side. This is like a little pocket. I'm going to take this side and we're going to squash it down like that. So I'm just opening it one side and I'm squashing it down. Again, keeping everything lined up in the middle. It looks a bit like a kind of a house. Make sure there's no wrinkles in there. Lined up like so. There we go. Great. And then if you just almost sort of close that page, and we're going to do the same on the other side. So I've got this, again, this little pocket. Put the finger in to get rid of wrinkles. And squash it down. We go great and then again sort of then folding back that page I think oh, no, actually sorry keeping it as it is <laughs> you can tell I haven't practiced this one for a bit can't you <laughs> a bit more rusty anyway so it looks sorry like a little house like this turn to the back and again turn the page until again, it looks a bit like the house with that line across it. So it should have a little gap there in the middle. Yeah, like anything with learning, it's all about often repetition really helps you learn and do things fluently. That's it. So it should be looking a bit like this on both sides. Great, great. So our next step is we're gonna take the bottom inside corner there 
and we're going to fold it up at this sort of an angle so it's a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a gap there that sort of an angle so i've lifted up that corner squashed it down and i've left a little bit of a it's a bit of a guesstimate i'm guesstimating myself too but i'm not doing it all the way to the corner i've left a little bit um and i want you to do the same on the other side so it matches so again, lifting that up and doing it so there's again, similar sort of gap at the end. That's it. Happy? Great. So I want you to bring down those two little bits that we folded up. And in a moment, I want you to tuck them away actually. So to do that, put your, put your finger in at the side and push that, that bit that we folded inwards. Oh, it's so hard to explain in words sometimes. <laughs> but it was that, that bit that we'd folded up, brought down, putting my fingers in at the side, and I'm trying to lift that and tuck it away. So we're not adding any extra lines. We're just tucking in. So it will end up in there. And squashing in. So it's basically hidden away. But you haven't had to add any extra lines. And the same thing on the other one. So again, it was up here. I brought it down. And I just want to I'm opening up the side a bit and I'm going to push it in, bring it in and tuck it away. I've, I love the thought it's almost like dance for your fingers, isn't it? You're having to learn all these little complex steps with your fingers that you never thought you could do. And I think it's the spatial side, which is probably quite hard for us, but also that challenge means then you're not thinking about anything else because you can't possibly <laughs> great happy have you all managed to sort of tuck away that little bit great so i want you to now turn it the other way up so it's like a heart it's like a heart again and in just a moment your butterfly will be revealed so all you have to do is take one side the top layer and bring that down along that vertical line oh yep yeah. and squash it down so i'm just going to take the side just one layer and fold it down and that should have opened up its wings so even though it was just a little a a5 no mine was a6 <laughs> piece of paper it's actually made quite a good size butterfly hasn't it yay and then your piece, can you see on the back, there's this little pocket. And that means you could take your butterfly and kind of swoop into the edge of a page and it will nicely grip <laughs> onto a book. And it's a nice thing to decorate as well, this. Yay! Fantastic. So it really will work very well. Um, it could be something as well that you could make for make for others too. I mean, it's a really nice bookmark, isn't it? That you've that you've done. So wow, well done everybody. You've done lots. What have we done? We've done a cup, we've done a heart, we've done a frog, we've done a tray, we've done a butterfly bookmark. Whoa, all of that in an hour. Yay! <laughs> Fantastic. Which to interrupt, but can is Beth okay? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Maybe asleep. Oh, okay. Hope she's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's all asleep. Sorry, to it's that relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> I would guess some company. Oh, I'm sure. So yeah, this can be something nice to decorate. Oh wow, lovely! Look at that, Matthew's got a, a heart with with wings there as well. I, I riffed the original heart a little. The original, yes, I love yeah. it. Maybe, maybe, we could, should we see each other's butterflies? And then I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions, right? Okay, if I do one, two, three. One, two, three. Thanks, everyone. 
So I wonder if we could just encourage you to reflect for a moment. It's probably easiest doing it in the chat box. Um, I guess the questions that I'd love to encourage you to, re to reflect on is, has this helped you? And if so, in what way? And also, how's it made you feel? Well, I'll put it on the chat box, that way you can see it. Has this helped you? If yes, in what way? Uh, second question, how's it made you feel? And any improvements? Are you going to continue doing origami? I know some of you are already, you know, has, has this switched you on to origami? We continue. Maybe. Yeah, it's always just really useful feedback, mostly because I do actually also any improvements. So any you can say negative things as well, whatever you want to say. I think it's really imp important to be able to give your honest feedback. Um, improvements. I'll, I'll put in also my YouTube channel too, and that can be to share with anybody else as well. Um, I try and find, try and share folds that I think will um, feel like appropriate at the time I'm doing at the moment. I guess I'll be doing a live fold pop soon of a sort of snowflakey star like thing. Um, that's just been for me playing around really. So if I can discover things myself, then I will also share those as well as traditional folds or ones that people could, could enjoy. Oh, you want to your lovely little puppy Matthew is making itself heard. 